So this poster represents the start of a new intercollaborative research project between veterinary medicine and human medicine focusing on veterinary dermatology and human dermatology. The project is focused on demodex mites, which are present in both humans and animals. In man, demodex mites live in hair follicles and spacious glands, and the two main species are demodex folliculorum and demodex brevis. In animals, especially in dogs, there are three demodex species, demodex canis, demodex cornei, and demodex inii. Demodex in all species are associated with serious skin disease, and it's an overpopulation of these demodex mites that result in these diseases. In dogs, demodex mites can result in a potentially, potentially life-threatening skin disease known as canine demodicosis. In this poster, um, I compare both human and canine demodicosis. So with clinical classification and features of canine demodicosis. So in canine demodicosis, it's classified into two main groups, localised and generalised. Localised being lesions found in one to five locations and generalised where more than five locations are affected and most commonly severely affected are the paws. It can be juvenile or adult in onset, with juvenile being less than 18 months of age and adult onset of greater than four years. Lesions grossly appear like areas of scaly alopecia, clichinified, hyperpigmented um, and erythematous or pustular rashes. Um, the first picture represents Demodex canis. Um, as we can see, this mite with um, um, small legs. Um, the second picture is that of a dog with canine demodicosis, and we can see that his paws are severely affected. The lesion distribution tends to be the paws and around the face, especially around the eyes and around the mouth, and then less commonly um, the ventral aspects of the axilla, um, inguinal areas, and then the hind legs. In comparison to humans, if we look at the classification, so primary demodicosis is that where there's absence of current or underlying inflammatory diseases, and then secondary demodicosis, where um, demodicosis has occurred secondary to immunosuppression. In rosacea, there is a possible role for demodex mites. So demodex um, predominantly lives in the facial skin, and so the disease generally causes um, lesions there. So lesions consist of areas of erythema, pustules, papules, nodules, and um, occasionally conjunctivitis, um, similar to that of what we see in dogs. So the first picture is of demodex folliculorum, and again, we can see the similarity between demodex, they're of the same family. Rosacea, so this patient has an erythematous type of rosacea, and then the lesion distribution is centrofacial. Diagnosis of um, canine demodicosis is either by skin scraping, so that's where we um, squeeze the skin and gently scrape with the scalpel blade and then assess the material um, on a slide, or else we can do a trichogram or a biopsy. The biopsy we would only take if the um, skin scraping and a trichogram are negative. Um, so the first picture we see um, is of hair follicle. Um, sorry is of the hair follicle, we can see um, hyperplasia of the epidermis and then these dilated hair follicles um, that contain demodex mites. The second picture is where the hair follicle has ruptured, releasing the mites into the dermis and eliciting a foreign body type reaction. Then if we look into humans, so a human diagnosis of um, demodicosis and of rosacea is generally by meeting phenotypic criteria and you can also do a standard skin surface biopsy where um, mites are extruded from the skin um, using um, uh, 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 and some acetate or a slide um, when more than five mites per centimetre squared is accepted to be um, five mites per centimetre squared is accepted to be abnormal. Again, we can see the similarities in histology um, to that of canine, where we see the demodex mites within the hair follicle lumen um, extending down into the spacious glands. And again, similar to dogs, when the follicle becomes too expanded and dilated, um, that there is rupture and release of demodex to within the dermis. Treatments. This is where um, veterinary medicine lags behind. Um, so treatment is challenging in dogs, um, and it consists of ascaroidals and antimicrobial treatment. 
um, but treatment failures are generally due to owner non-compliance or financial constraints of the owner and then um, poor drug efficacy and occasional death of patients due to secondary septicemia. Ivermectin was previously the drug of choice, however this has potential life-threatening side effects, especially in collie dogs that have MDR1 mutations. But there are more promising treatments that are not yet licensed um, in the oxaline family, and these are um, like Brevecto, so Suralaner and Fluralaner. So in humans, um, there are topical or systemic ascoridals and antimicrobial therapies available, and the topical um, ascoridals include Ivermectin, and then we've got um, permethrin, um, sodium sulfosamide, um, or sulfur cleansers, metronidazole or antibiotics, and then az azecal um, acid cream or gel are commonly used together with antibiotics like doxycycline, minocycline, as well as erythromycin and metronidazole. So both of these um, conditions, both in dogs and um, in man, are very poorly understood, the pathogenesis of them. We believe that there's modulation of the immune system is most likely, given that um, they can live happily as just commensals, but then this overgrowth that um, occurs, so it's likely that they're modulating the immune system there. In dogs, we know that there is a genetic breed predisposition, as we see it more commonly in certain breeds. Um, and then there is activation of immunosuppressive pathways as we see increased occurrence in dogs on immunosuppressive therapy or with systemic diseases where there's immunosuppression like neoplasia, hypothyroidism and diabetes. Similar in humans that we see an overproliferation of demodex mites in patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy or on having immunosuppressive diseases. Um, it has been shown that there's activation of the innate immune system via toll-like receptors in dogs and the keratinocytes, and similar um, activation of toll-like receptors has been found in humans. So our research is now going to focus on the pathogenesis behind these two very related and important skin diseases, um, and our main focus is going to be on the innate immune response of Diamidex mite over proliferation. Our research is funded by the UCD Wellcome Trust Strategic Support Fund. This is where we have three collaborating bodies, UCD, SFI and Wellcome Trust funding it. Thank you.